guys, welcome to Surviving the Hundred. Today we're talking about season five, episode two, where all of our favorite characters are trapped underground. Showrunner Jason Rothenberg is in the studio again to talk about the episode. Let's see what kind of dirt he has for us. Puns are hard. So let's talk about Octavia's journey. Jaha. Oh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Octavia's journey at the beginning of this episode was benevolent, they're just stealing blankets, yeah. give them back, and then goes very quickly to capital punishment. Um, what in the world is that journey like going from one extreme to the other? Yeah, I think it was, you know, when you have a five year clock and you know that in five years the door is going to open and everything is going to be okay, we're going to come back up and live our lives, you know, happily ever after. You can manage that. But then they discover that the door is locked forever, potentially. They're stuck under there forever. That's when things start to spiral into, into chaos and madness and people start to behave badly. And it forces Octavia to sort of lead. You know, she's, she feels in the beginning like she did her job. She got everybody saved. She chose wisely in terms of you know one crew of it all. Everybody got to bring people from their clan. And all she wants to do now is kind of train and she doesn't want to deal with administrative bull and so you know ultimately uh she has to step up this is you know sort of the story of how she becomes the red queen sky Ripa becomes the red queen she has a lot of names at this point she does as marie <laughs> says she was the girl under the floor then she was grounder pounder not a name that i advocate i loved that name though then she became sky Ripa, and now she's Blood arena. And what does that do to her emotionally to reinstate the law that killed her mother? What happens to her is she sort of subjugates her own feelings and emotions for her people. And she's going to sort of bear it all so that they don't have to. She's going to, you know, make the hard decisions and sort of lead by brutal example. I mean, you know, you'll notice in the beginning of 502, Nyla gives Octavia a book, Ovid, Metamorphosis, and it's a book of, you know, Greek mythology, which is, you know, something that her mother and Bellamy read to her when she was a child. And um, I actually think there's not quite a lot of gladiator stuff in it. <laughs> uh, I actually like the title Metamorphosis, and I thought the first line of the, of the text of the book was really sort of appropriate for the metamorphosis she was going to undergo. And so this is the sort of world that she's recreated now. Now we can actually talk about Jaha's death, which I was wrecked. But why did this feel like was he was the character that we needed to see die? And why was it sort of a fitting end for him? Or why you know, was it not a fitting end? The for thing him? that was the most important to me about his his exit from the show was that he would go out as a hero, that he would go out as someone whose death made you feel uh, sad as opposed to like rooting for the death of a bad guy, mm -hmm. you know? And I know, I think Jaha's journey on the show was uh, was controversial in the sense of sometimes he was heroic and sometimes he was so obsessed with saving his people that he was throwing little kids overboard and feeding them to sea monsters, right? Like the guy had a, he was extreme. He had flaws. <laughs> he was extreme. And you know, Isaiah is a riveting actor and I really wanted to make sure that this story made us feel something. And I love the pairing of Octavia and, and Jaha. And I love the fact that, that Isaiah, that Jaha gives Octavia the sort of final key to leadership that she's going to need um, going forward, and which is not necessarily a good thing, but it keeps them alive and it keeps them together. So that when that door opens, you know, that could have been a concentration camp liberation. They could have all been wasted away and barely surviving. But mm -hmm. when that door opens, jumping ahead, it's this sort of fighting force, this strong one crew that comes out that's, you know, going to prove difficult for Dioz's army to deal with. You know, everybody has a different take on Octavia as a leader. And six years later, who, where does everyone fall? There's Endra to consider, there's Kane, there's Abby, yeah. there's um, Miller, there's everyone inside the bunker sort of plays a different role. You know, Octavia earned her place, right? She earned her leadership position in Dial Die Merrily last season by winning the Conclave. But that wasn't the end of it. You know, you still need to show up and, and you know, do the hard thing. And really, in this case, it was hard for her, but she had to realize that and this was the other thing, by the way, about Jaha, like we wanted him to go out as A, a hero and B, who someone was consistent with, still wanting to do what was right for Sky Crew. And Octavia is forced in this episode to realize that they're her people too. It'll be strange again when Bellamy sees her for the first time and it'll be 
obviously strange for Clark when she sees her for the first time, but the people in that bunker are sort of holding the moral center, like Kane, for instance, who thinks she's gone too far, mm -hmm. but uh, for the most part, they are unified behind her. You know, six years later, um, is, this, is this fighting pit, is the purpose of it still to, you know, keep us alive? or have the motives for it maybe morphed into something else? You know, I think it's part of its entertainment, unfortunately, part of it is definitely punishment. For me, it was important to try to like, understand the origin of this thing. And we saw it at the end of 501, we go back and we realize sort of where it began in, in 502. And the ending of this episode is obviously um, a big cliffhanger again. Um, Kane is down in that fighting pit. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how worried should we be for him? Is he going to be okay? <laughs> um, you should be worried for him, for sure. That's all I'll say about that. <sighs> okay, well, now we're going to kick it over to the Death Watch. I think you know who is going to be on my list this week. Thank you so much, Jason, for coming in and You're talking welcome. to us about this episode. Thank you. This week on the Death Watch, we have Kane and Indra. Starting with Kane, he left off in a super precarious position at the end of this episode. He was thrown into this gladiator pit, and for all that I love him, Kane isn't so much a fighter, he's a thinker. He thinks his way out of problems. I'm not sure he can take all the other gladiators in that pit. We can cross our fingers and we can hope and we can pray, but for now, he's on the death watch. Sorry guys. Moving on to Indra. Indra's tried her best to help Octavia through this leadership transition, but at the end of the six year time jump, she did not seem super on board with the gladiator pits. You know one thing evil overlords do not like? Someone who doesn't believe in the cause. If Indra's loyalty is coming into question, she might be the next person on the chopping block, but we'll see. And that's it for Surviving the 100 Episode 2. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to tune in next week for more.